Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I am Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And today I am broadcasting from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia, also known as the ATL. So grateful that you joined me today. Uh, I have a great show for you, and I believe that you will be transformed and that you will, re you will receive exactly what you've been praying and searching for. Well, how are you doing today, this afternoon, this evening, this morning, whatever time you're listening to me, uh, it is the right time. Well, it's a beautiful day here in the ATL, and it is getting hot, y'all. Summertime is, is almost here, and I'm excited about it. Have a great show for you. Going to get right to it. I am teaching. So many of you have been emailing me, and you want me to teach more, so that's what you're going to be getting today. And I'm going to be teaching you on how to pray and believe for the blessed life. Specifically, I'm going to be teaching on the prayer of Jabez. And you may say, Constance, what, is the, what in the world is the prayer of Jabez? Well, I'm going to be teaching you on that. So that's going to be part one. And then in part two, you're going to hear a powerful testimony of how one of my listeners, she is manifesting a new home, her dream home and how she did that. All righty, so let's just get right to it. Everybody follow me on social media, uh, on YouTube, Constance Arnold. I have lots of videos. I do at least one video a week there where I give you some really great tips on manifestation, uh, you know, spirituality, money, peace of mind, uh, just some real strategic tips and on Instagram, Law of Attraction Constance, uh, on Twitter, LOA Constance, and on Facebook, Coach with Constance. And oh, yes, I've, I forgot to tell you that starting in July, I'm going to be starting my six week mastermind. It's going to be Manifest Anything. You're going to come with your one big goal your one big goal, and for six weeks, I'm going to teach you how to manifest that one big goal. Not two, not three, but your number one goal. So I'm only going to open it up to 20 people. So the first 20 people who sign up, will be the first 20 that I'm going to take. I like it small and intimate. You're going to be partnering with somebody. Uh, it's going to be pretty intense, everybody. Uh, you're going to be in a private Facebook group. You're going to be able to sit in the hot seat and ask me specific questions. You're going to receive group coaching, and we're going to be focusing in on that one goal. One goal, six weeks, manifest anything. So let me just say up front, even though I believe in the miraculous, let's just say you may say, Constance, I want to manifest a million dollars. But right now your consciousness is at zero. I'm going to be putting you in the consciousness of a million dollars so that that amount can accelerate quickly. Everybody understand that? So I'm excited about it. Visit my website for more info. Uh, fulfillingyourpurpose.com and while you're on there uh, let's see what do I want to say while you're on my website uh, I, I'm thanking you in advance for your donation you need to learn how to bless what's blessing you and I got a question for have you been listening to me for years but you never made a donation well I'm going to encourage you to to make a move because when you donate, when you give, uh, when you get in the vibration of sharing, it puts you in the vibration of abundance, really. All right, so here we go. Let me take a sip of water, everybody. Praying for the blessed life. Y'all know I get my downloads from the spirit and uh, the prayer of Jabez. So, you know, in 2020 or maybe over the last year, 
you know, you might be feeling some kind of way. You know, maybe you're trying to refocus on who am I now or what are my goals now? Y'all know it is, it is June. So that's month number six. We are halfway through 2021. And do you believe that you are really focused in on what do you desire? You know, that's the first principle in using the law of attraction. So I feel like this is a time of refocusing. Sometimes when you've been really uh, in the vibration of trying to manifest something, you might have gotten a little frustrated. Why has this happened? And uh, I just got some questions for you. Do you feel like you've been doing it on your own? Uh, have you forgot to factor in God? You know, even as close I, as I am to the spirit, sometimes I'll get on a project or on a manifestation. And it's like I'm trying to do everything myself. Is that you, whether or not it is it is getting a new career, maybe moving into a new home, maybe attracting love, maybe releasing weight, whatever it is, we need to factor in God and learn how to expect and pray for the blessed life. So let me talk about the prayer of Jabez. So this is in the Old Testament. So it was this man, I'm breaking it down, y'all. It was this man named Jabez. And the, the name Jabez... Uh, means painful or sorrowful. His mother named him that because I guess her birth was sorrowful. So, you know, back in the day, you know, every time they call your name, there was a meaning attached to it. Just like when my dad named me, he named me Constance, meaning consistency. And so every time they would say, call his name Jabez, it would be sorrowful or painful. And I guess that must have got on Jabez's nerve because Jabez prayed this prayer. This this book, The Prayer of Jabez, which I'm going to recommend you get, it was like on the New York Times best-selling list for for forever. And uh, it's a small book, but this is what Jabez prayed. He said, and I'm going to read in two different translations. He said. O oh Lord, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. And then the last sinner said, so God granted him what he requested. Let me read it in another translation. Jabez said, O oh Lord, O oh God of Israel, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted his request. Isn't that interesting? Let me break that down a little bit. He prayed. When's the last time you really prayed? God that you would bless me indeed. Everybody say that with me. Oh God, bless me indeed. I love this second one. And enlarge my territory. I'm going to expound on that. Enlarge my thinking. Enlarge my borders. Enlarge my manifestation. Enlarge my influence. Enlarge my consciousness. That you would bless me indeed. And, and, and expand my territory. Territory is what you possess who you are. And then it says that your hand would be with me. Wow. What would happen if you, in your life if you knew that the hand of God, in the Old Testament, the hand of God uh, um, really means power. That the hand of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the spirit of God, the wisdom of God would be with you. And then it said, in all that I do, in raising my children, in going to work, in, in, in exercising, in working on this project, in healing my body. Oh, Lord, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be, me, be with me and that you would keep me from difficult times that, and that I may not cause pain. 
And then it said, so God granted him what he requested. What would it feel like in your life if God granted you what you prayed for? So we're talking about praying and believing for the blessed life. So have you been thinking too small? Have you, do you need to pray for God to expand your thinking, uh, expand your desire for life, health, and wealth? You know, there's another portion in Isaiah that talks about for God to enlarge your tent or God enlarge my mind, enlarge the way I think enlarge my perspective, enlarge what I'm believing for, increase um, my finances, enlarge what I can be, do, and have. That is a powerful prayer, you know. So, so let's pray that right now. Oh, Lord, oh, Spirit, enlarge my thinking, my perspective, my vision, expand my consciousness in what I can be, do, and have. Because we know that everything is consciousness. You know, one thing that I did personally after 2020, because before 2020, I was accustomed to things being a certain way. But 2020 really shifted me personally and professionally. So I had to ask God to expand my thinking and give me new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at things. Give me a new way of doing things, et cetera. So how many of you see that maybe you've been trying to lose weight and you've been just focused in on this one diet or this one way of doing things? Ask God to enlarge your territory. Maybe you believe that the only way you can get a house is to have a perfect credit score. You know, my mentor in Africa says, he says that in America, he said, Constance, I'm kind of mimicking his, uh, <laughs> his exit. He said, you guys, in America, your credit is your God. That's what he said. He said, your credit is your God instead of God being your God. So, so, so just think about what area do you really need to pray and ask God to enlarge in your life? So that's the prayer of Jabez. Jabez, he, he, he got sick and tired of being where, where he was. He recognized that, man, I am not going to stay in this place. He asked God to expand, to bless him, to ex to enlarge his territory, that's his life, and that the hand of God would be on him, that he would keep him from trouble. I love the last part, and God granted his request. Could it be that God is waiting for your prayers? I heard somebody say nothing happens in the earth until people pray for it, because we do live in a voice-activated society. A voice activated world is what I should say. And so until you say something, nothing is going to happen. If you believe anything in the Bible in Genesis, it says that 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 the spirit was hovering over the earth and the earth was dark, void, and without form. And then it said, and God said, and then God saw. So it was only when God began to say, speak, activate, that things begin to change. So, so why is being blessed so important? You know, the word blessed means empowered to succeed. And so my question to you is, do you want to succeed in all areas of your life? Of course you do. And that's why on the inside of us, like Jabez, we know that we should be living an abundant life. We, you know, when you see beautiful cars, and I'm just not talking about things, but somebody said that peace is the new success, whatever it is. 
peace is a new wealth. And so if you have an abundance of peace, an abundance of uh, uh, of sleep, an abundance of happiness, an abundance of joy, money, it's not just for you, but you're being blessed for others. So blessed means empowered to succeed. What would your life look and feel like? What would you be doing? How could you bless others? How could you impact the world? What charities could you give to? What would your life look like if you were blessed uh, uh, with health? You know, one thing that I have done and I'm still doing, but I'm expanding it, is that I really want to have an institute or I'm going to say a, a platform, a bigger platform, or a, a, a educational component where I can go in and really teach and train people who are very successful <clears throat> business-wise, but they just have so much pressure and other issues subconsciously that's sabotaging them. So see, I just don't want to be blessed for me but you are blessed to be a blessing. So, you know, we're going to pray this prayer again uh, at the end. And so, uh, first of all, let's talk about why being blessed is so important. It's important because living the blessed life or believing for the blessed life is God's idea. God is the one who said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I'm going to say to you, if you... If you have a blessed life, who would you be blessing? What would you be doing? How would that impact um, your family, your coworkers, et cetera? So you're believing and praying for a blessed life because it's God's idea. Uh, you, you are praying and believing for a blessed life because you were created to to, to dominate and to, to live a prosperous life so that you can impact others. You know, I tell people, you can't bless. If you don't have any money, you can't bless somebody financially. I'm not saying that you can't bless them. So the whole concept of praying for blessing is not selfish, is not self-centered, but you are blessed to be a blessing. So first of all, you have to know that that was God's idea. God is the one who put that little uh, inkling on the inside of you where you just want more. You know that there's more, there's more potential, there's more ability, there's more uh, possibilities waiting for you. Well, you know, the blessed life is a part of your heritage. It's, it's your divine right. You have a right to live the blessed life. You have a right to, to be happy, to be abundant, and to live the blessed life. <clears throat> and I'm going to also say that the blessed life is essential for you to fulfill God's purpose in your life. I mean, all of the things that you want to be is just not for you, but you want to be blessed. You want to be healthy so that you can serve people. You want to have a different perspective so that you can be open to people who may not think or look like you. And so... <clears throat> The blessed life, if you are emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and physically blessed, then your purpose in this earth will, will really, I'm going to say, more greatly impact others. So you have a right, it is your divine right as a child of God to live the blessed life. Okay, drum roll please, everybody. The blessed life is a choice. <clears throat> You're going to have to choose. See, see God has given you the, the powerful gift of choose you this day. Moment by moment, you can either choose to be blessed or not blessed, happy or sad. 
you can choose to think poverty or abundance. You can choose to think and believe and expect <clears throat> health, healing, or sickness and disease. So the blessed life is a choice. What a powerful a, a creator you are and what a powerful position that God has placed us in in order to really have a blessed life. But Jabez probably said, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And God, I want you to bless me. <clears throat> I want you to expand my territory, expand my thinking, and I want your hand on me. And, and, and one thing I see in a lot of new thought, I'm not judging, just observing, is that, and I know I say it all the time, we're powerful manifestors, we're God in the earth, but you're not by yourself, baby. You're one with all that there is. You're one with the, with the person or the spirit that has all of the wisdom and the knowledge. And so let me go over those again. Why, why is being blessed so important? Uh, being blessed was God's idea. Uh, being blessed helps you to dominate and rule and reign in your own life. Uh, it helps you to fulfill God's purpose in your life. Another thing to remember is it's your divine right as a child of God to, to, to be blessed. It's kind of like if you have, you have this powerful inheritance, but you never asked for it. Jabez was like, I'm asking for my inheritance. All right. Uh, the blessed life is a choice you choose. You can choose right now what you're going to believe you can do, be, and have. Because we know on God's end, he says, <clears throat> God says, I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you're able to ask or think. So whatever you're thinking, God says, I'm going to do exceedingly. I love those, those, uh, are those adverbs or ad adjectives? <laughs> he says, I'm going to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you're able to ask. What are you asking for? What are you believing for? And what are you thinking? So I want you to be bold during these times. And like Jabez, uh, I want you to begin to think big, ask big. Believe big, expect big. You don't have to know how. <clears throat> I was listening to this one teacher, and he said he felt in his spirit, God said, um, Jesse, it's time for you to get an airplane. Because, you know, for everything that, I'm, everything that God was having him to do, he needed an airplane. And so, you know, so he could get quicker to the different places instead of just going to the different airports. So this man said back to God, to the spirit, God, I don't have money to, for no airplane. And he said, the spirit spoke back to him and said, I didn't ask you to pay for it. I asked you to believe for it. Somebody need to think on that one. And so whatever you are asking, believing, and expecting, you don't know how, but like Jabez, you just need to ask, invoke, and activate the inheritance that, that's yours. So you need to decide what you want. So uh, maybe instead of you praying, God, please pay my mortgage or please pay my rent, why not expand your territory, expand your thinking and say, thank you for paying this house off. Or I want a new car. Thank you for a, a, a debt-free car. You see that? So that's an expansion uh, uh, of what you could be, do, and have, or God heal my, heal my throat. Why not? I'm walking in divine health. So you're going to begin to boldly ask for more, more for yourself, but more for others. So, so, so dare to believe big. You know, y'all, there is so much more. There are so many possibilities and probabilities. We know in the quantum world, you know, that the whole law says that whatever you observe or look at is what's going to be downloaded in your life. 
what are you looking at uh, in the beginning of June? What are you thinking about? What are you believing for? Why not ask for more? You know, there is a, a verse in the Bible in Hebrews 4, and I love this verse, and it says, let us come boldly before the throne of God's grace that we might find help in a time of need. Anybody in need? <laughs> Anybody want a different manifestation? Anybody need the empowering presence of the Spirit? Come boldly. Ask big. Think big. Expand your way of believing. It says come boldly before the throne of grace. So grace means you don't deserve it. It has little or nothing to do with you. It's all about God's love and care for, for you. So you're coming boldly before the throne. So what? So that you can find help. Uh, J.B. said, I need some help up in here. And, and so you come. An a another translation of that says, Come to where grace is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace that we all urge, ur urgently need to strengthen us and to help us. So, you know, there's something on the inside of us that knows that there is more like Jabez. So I want you to think about your life. You got to get real with yourself. You know, you got to get real with yourself and, okay, I've been believing for this and listening to Constance. And, you know, God, I love Constance and she's a great teacher. She has great people on her show. But I am ready for change. Could it be that the Spirit has just been waiting for you to come and ask for help just like Jabez did? And, you know, I, I think sometimes we just go along in our lives and we forget who we're connected to. We forget who we are. I know I do. I have. And then, you know, you wake up, you're like, wait a minute. I am connected to this unlimited source of supply that loves me. Wait a minute. There is unlimited supply in the universe. Why am I thinking so small? Why am I, why have I allowed my circumstances to keep me in a box? Oh God, expand my territory. Oh God, expand my belief. Oh God, expand my way of thinking. So let's pray this together. I'm going to suggest that you all buy the book, as I said, that you're going to buy the book. It's a small book. It might be free online because the book has it's been probably a decade ago, The Prayer of Jabez. I want you to pray that prayer for 30 days. I want you to keep a journey. I want you to pray believing. You know, just print it out. And pray it every day. And I want you to keep a journal. And I want you to really journal, you know, areas where you see the hand of God, because he prayed for the hand of God to bless him. But areas where you get blessed, you know, areas where you, you see expansion. And, you know, the last sentence in there says, God granted what he requested and any area that you're praying about and that prayer is answered, I want you to write that down. And then I'm going to have some of you come on the show and share that experience. So does everybody understand that? So you're going to be, you're going to be reading that prayer. You're going to read the book first of all, but you're going to read that prayer of Jabez out loud. You can pray it a couple of times a day, whatever works for you. And then you're going to keep a journal of every, what you might consider to be every little thing that your prayer is really granted. 
So here we go. Everybody close your eyes. Hey, if you're driving, don't do that. <laughs> All right. And it says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. And Constance called on the God of Israel. And Mary and John and Matthew. Oh, Lord, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil or trouble that I may not cause pain. So God granted what he requested. You know, you know, prayer, everybody, is a powerful spiritual gift it is a mystery uh you know i've heard people say prayer changes things prayer is connecting with god you don't have to be on your knees you don't have to be doing any of that you just have to pray and connect with with what's already yours you see in the invisible realm or in the spiritual realm everything already exists and so when you pray you're not begging or pleading your prayer and your words are simply aligning is simply coming into agreement with your divine inheritance your divine inheritance your divine right is abundance. Your divine right is prosperity. Your divine right is love. Your divine right is having children. Your divine right is to live the blessed life. And, you know, as I said earlier, blessed means empowered to succeed. So that means by July 1st, or whenever you, you listen to this, we're going to pray this prayer in faith. You know, something that's dropped in my spirit, I would really meditate. Meditate means to just kind of read over it and, and think over it and, and take a look at it and just say, okay, God, that you would bless me indeed. What would that look like? What are some blessings that I want? You see how, how I'm breaking this prayer down and enlarge my territory. What do I need to change? How do I need to make my thinking bigger, my believing bigger, and that your hand would be with me? What would happen if the hand would be with me? The power would be with me. The abundance would be with me. The, the favor of God would be with me. Oh, my goodness, what would your life look like? So we are praying for the blessed life and expecting it. We're praying the prayer of Jabez. And Jabez is spelled J-A-B-E-Z. So guys, I want you to write me and let me know uh, how this has really impacted you. I'm excited about it. Uh, and I know that it's going to really radically change you.